Welcome to the Three Island Discs uh, Music and General Crack Podcast. I'm Q. And I'm Anna. Uh, you can find us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Bandcamp. So uh, we're re recordings.bandcamp.com. Yeah, plus our own website, which, which is, is re recordings.wordpress.com. Good man, Anto, and Ross on YouTube, re recordings on YouTube, um, where you can find all our stuff. So we're here, Anthony, with uh, Thomas Close. Aileen McConnell, Arlen McConnell. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're here to talk about dancing today, aren't we? Um, Thomas and Aileen's mother was May Close, uh, or May, May Allen, uh, Allen School of Dancing. Um, so we'll just sit in. Thomas and Aileen, the May Allen School of Dancing, how did it all uh, get started or what's the, the history behind it? Uh, well, the history behind it is that um, my mother was me, Alan, as she said, and um, I screwed up outside on a glass, a place called the Green's Corner, and was attending a class, a dancing classes in Ballymena of a different form, uh, ballet or, or whatever. And on one occasion, in a neighbouring part of the building, there was uh, an Irish dancing class taking place. And she was mesmerised by this more lively form of dancing. Mm-hmm. And she said to her mother, that's the sort of dancing I prefer to do. So Granny, my mother's mother, Granny, uh, thought, well, OK, if that's what you want to do, well, well, you can do it. Uh, so Dad, a wee bit of uh, fuel to it, as it were. Uh, my mother grew up as a Presbyterian. Uh, so this was, I know to her, this was Irish dancing. And uh, the teacher was a lady called Mrs. McCarroll, and uh, the organisation that they were involved in was called the Festival Organisation, which is still running to this day. And traditionally, the Irish dancing, ironically, Irish dancing was held in Protestant halls or Orange halls and attended mostly by people of a, a unionist tradition, mm-hmm. let's say. But that didn't deter either my mother or Granny. So mommy obviously became quite good at it and um, attended various festivals all over Northern Ireland. And as her reputation gathered momentum then, she was invited to do a bit of teaching. Mm-hmm. But interestingly enough, uh, just talking about this earlier, uh, as a, a young child, she was invited to take part in a, an ice dancing competition in Money Glass, which is literally a few miles down the road. Uh, so there's a carnival, as it used to be called, the carnival, uh, that included Irish dancing competitions, and Mommy was asked to compete. But when she arrived, she wasn't allowed to dance because she wasn't a member of the Irish dancing organisation at that time, which was called the Commission. Again, mm-hmm. the Commission still is in operation or still works or to promote Irish dancing. So whether or not it was because she was from the festival organisation or whether it was to do with politics or religion or whatever, <laughs> Uh, she wasn't allowed to take part now. We're, we're talking here in the nineteen, probably in late nineteen thirties, right, mm-hmm. early forties, whatever. So it's a long time ago, and it's amazing that those tensions still exist to some extent. Oh, but because she wasn't allowed to dance, uh, my grandmother then uh, did a wee bit of research to find out why, and the the research revealed that you can't uh, compete unless you're a member of this organisation called Commission. So she thought about uh, joining Commission, which was based in Dublin, mm-hmm. uh, part of the Gaelic League, etc., etc. Uh, so very staunchly Irish um, organisation, uh, which you can imagine didn't really sit too mm-hmm. well no. uh, with her, her background. So Alien will fill you in with the next week, but this story then. <laughs> So then um, Granny found out from the commission, she must have got a letter, and I know those days obviously it took a while, but she found out that if she went to some a dancing teacher called Anna McCoy in Belfast, that she could help Mummy become a member of commission. Mm-hmm. So Mummy went up then and attended classes in Belfast. And you know, in those days that's, that was quite a journey. Once a week up to Belfast, but did that. And then Miss Anna McCoy tutored her for her dancing teacher's exam and mummy went up and did all the different things you have to do for the dancing teacher's exam which included learning the Irish language which of course mummy mm-hmm. had no idea of 
So she had to go and do private lessons down with a lady in Money Glass called Ian McCann, I think was her name. So she did lessons for that and then she had to go down to Dublin to do the exam and Anna McCoy was a great lady too, a great stalwart of Irish dancing back in the day too. And luckily enough she passed her dancing teacher's exam mm -hmm. and that was the start of it then and you know just through word of mouth some people heard it in the very first dancing class she ever had I believe was in Balahi. Although well, she did, she did teach in other places before that, perhaps. Well, but she even prior to having a sort of formal class, uh, she she taught a wee class in her own farm mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, the, the political, uh, maybe from a political point of view, there was a hut, which was ideal for dancing uh, on my grandfather's land, uh, and it was actually owned or maybe not owned but used by the bee man yes so it was referred to as the bee man's hut and uh, the local orange order and black uh, order whatever had you various uh, functions and the use of dances and things whatever so when my mother it was on my uncle's my, sorry my grandfather's land and mommy wanted to have a dancing class in the bee man's hut mm -hmm. but when the local or is it be good word of this that she was having an Irish dancing class to be there and so they said under no circumstances can you have an Irish dancing class mm -hmm. so she actually read up not unlike the premises we're currently sitting in <laughs> she read out an old uh, with her with my grandfather and uncle no doubt uh, read out what was a fact known as the loft mm -hmm. uh, read out the, the loft which had a nice wooden floor and that was probably where her first sort mm -hmm. of official Irish dancing class mm -hmm. took place and the, the pupils cycled up from money glass interesting enough mm -hmm. uh, and again without any just religion into it were mostly from you know the, the Catholic persuasion as yes. opposed to which again at the time was, was quite a big thing mm -hmm. uh, to have that sort of interaction but it started in, it started in the loft and yes. mommy you know, for many many years used to tell about those classes in the loft. How great they were and the great comradeship among them all. It was quite, it was mostly the adults, I it think. It seemed to be adults, yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think that's when Brian Toner arrived in the scene, was it? Could have been Brian Toner. Yeah. She, she also uh, constantly played the, the, but she played the piano, but then also played the piano accordion. Mm -hmm. So she was able to play music for the dancing as well. So she would have played the music as she was instructing the kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that musical talent then became known and she joined the Achille Band, uh, fronted for, by Brian Toner in Balahi. Yes. And she actually competed in the senior Achille Band competition at the first ever FLA in Mollingar. Very good. Which is interesting, we've all gone full circle, given that Maeve plays the accordion That's and the kids tall, were playing <laughs> in the senior Achille Band competition at the FLA. Themselves. So it's interesting just to three things. Yeah, and then we never got to Mulgar last year. Never got to Mulgar. It's almost full circle. No, I did wait. The wee gap in the circle there is just good. So that's the start of her teaching yeah. career then. Yeah, well then, as I say, Brian Toner then thought he would like her to have a dancing class in Balahi, you know, mm -hmm. to try and get a dance in class Balai. started there, Balinese, and then word of mouth just spread. and. You know, all of a sudden she was teaching all around the country, like mm -hmm. Kilray, Money mm -hmm. Moor, Carrigan, Money Glass, Toome, Cork, uh, Corky up North Antrim, and uh, Alan McGuigan, Castle Dawson, New Bridge, you know. But just we never throw photographs uh, in time for a week or whatever, and there's a photograph of her along with a, a team, a dancing team from Ballon Lees, mm -hmm. uh, presenting a cup. And it seems to be a lot of the competition at that time was based around team dancing, maybe more so than solo dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, she used to teach all uh, those Kelly dances, in particular, we had a Tory. I've done before. Yeah, no, it, <laughs> it, it, it seemed to have been that that was the thing. And I, I remember her talking about the rivalry between Balahi and Balinese, mm -hmm. which are obviously two parts the same 
Yeah. Same party. Same party. Yeah. Yeah. But there's yeah. not unlike the football, I suppose, there's a great rivalry between the dancing team from Malahi, which is mostly the Kiaski boys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Diamonds uh, is still names that you associate with Malahi. That's right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And they were competing against Balinese, and there's, by all accounts, great rivalry mm-hmm. between the two. Same dancing school, no? Yeah, well, it's a bit rivalry. Yeah. Ah, yeah. well, the same school with two different teams. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, so it was mostly solo dancing. See, you've them to start, or well, a bit of both. I would imagine. I mean, just like say, when she started in Kilray, I always remember her saying this, that she actually cycled to teach the dancing class in Kilray, and cycled home again. I thought, <laughs> wow, I have to drive to Kilray <laughs> to teach it. I was very sorry for myself. Oh, it's you know? little, uh, mm. it was a good to Kilray. It was a long jump to Kilray on the bike and your accordion on your shoulder. Mm. You know. Yeah, she always says she has to stop too, at the. At the lock or the lake, and take a wee break before showing into the hall because she was always out of breath, getting <laughs> yeah. her breath back. But she loved it, you know, and and her parents were very supportive. I must say, Granny, oh, right. Granny and Granda, very supportive, and you know. And then of course, Daddy came on the scene. He he came to the loft, the famous loft, to start to learn to dance, and then love blossomed obviously. Mm. Actually, <laughs> he used to dance at the Glen's Face, another mm-hmm. long-established competition, and the Glen's obviously. And uh, Daddy, who had ill health as even as a, a young lad, but was still uh, able to do a bit of dancing. Mm-hmm. And he would have been at a 10 a week class and part of a team that Mummy would have taught. And yeah. love must have blossomed mm-hmm. uh, during the oh, class. Right. Maybe. maybe that's why he was at the class. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't the dancer. He wasn't the there. <laughs> I'm sure that still goes on yet. But oh, inter- right. interesting enough, um, at that stage, yeah, when the, you know, fast forward a few years then, you know, when Mommy's teaching around the countryside and the split took place in, in dancing so that the Kogoi was formed as a, they broke away from commission or commission broke away from Kogoi, whatever way you, whatever side you want to take. So Mommy was, had become a Kogoi member from Kogoi and mm-hmm. the only other Kogoi dancing school in the area was Mr Kerrigan, Mr Seamus Kerrigan from Ballon Green, great legend in his, his own right so there were only the two of them dance, uh, teaching in this area so you know, they kept it all going through the troubles and through hard times and tried to foster Irish dancing and at that stage Thomas had mentioned there was only the Glen's face up in North Antrim and there was Draper's Town face which is mm-hmm. South Derry face you know so then that was Daddy's idea to run another face it was usually in Green Lock or something to try and you know boost the number so that more children would dance so a few more fish now. And an interesting point, I remember Mummy telling me that Mr. Kerrigan's costumes, his children all wore em- emerald green costumes, mm-hmm. the lovely emerald green costumes. And then when Mummy had her dancing school, you see, Daddy said, Now, I think it'd be a really good idea if all your different classes had different uh, dancing costume colours, the same embroidery, but different colours. Yes. So it was a good idea. So he said it'd be more entertaining when people are coming to watch it a face that. Not all the costumes would be mm-hmm. the same. So every <laughs> castle does have its own colour. Green Lock had its own colour. Money Glass had its own colour. Balmogwigan, mm-hmm. Balahi, everywhere. Yep. But a lot of that actually was down to the fact that the, the dancing classes were all organised by local GA clubs. I was just going to say that. So yeah. at, 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 at the local school of dancing, Mommy, if you like, was an employee mm-hmm. of the, the football clubs. Yep. So Newbridge, for example, said us here, Balmogwigan... Pony Glass, Carrigan, etc., etc. It would have been the football clubs who would have organised yeah. the class, and when we came along, so and and again with old programmes in the house and things, and that was the Allen School Money Glass, and Allen School Carrigan, mm-hmm. Allen School Newbridge, mm-hmm. that the kids were entered under. Yes. Whereas nowadays, uh, things have changed slightly, so the the, the classes are all organised and run by the teachers themselves. This was just maybe Allen School. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Dancers representing the Allen School could come from all different localities. Yes. So it's not the same rivalry as it were internally within the dancing school. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like in a very famous instant, there's blues struck <laughs> at, a, at a face, literally between like the uh, <laughs> And you know, it's probably a throwback to a football instant or mm-hmm. something, uh, where Allen School Money Glass versus Allen School Carrigan. <laughs> had to, maybe the, the fight had started at football match or something. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that's a, a interesting change. That's now, now a wee bit more independent in terms oh, of right. teaching. 
And you know, and, and now those days nearly everybody danced. You know, there wasn't that much entertainment probably mm. at home, so everybody, you know, and everybody knew mummy. <laughs> you know, no matter where you go, well, you're as close to the dancing teacher's daughter. <laughs> or, you know, that's just known far and wide. And she just had a real love of it and she did everything, you know, she could for well, it. Primary and primary schools as well. I started yeah, primary yeah. schools as well. And, you know, she just, she just was, was just in her heart and soul. And she, she worked hard at it to foster yes. it you know it was for the good of Irish dancing all the time mm -hmm. you know it wasn't a selfish thing it was just to mm -hmm. foster it and you know further it further it you know she like in our organisation you know there are conventions and meetings and that she, she wouldn't have missed one you know just mm -hmm. to make sure on top, on top of everything and but it's changed I mean the, the whole I suppose everything has changed but the the, the whole um idea of dancing probably has changed quite dramatically from when mother or ourselves even would have started mm -hmm. in terms of what the kids expect from it like the kids used to go to dancing class and you know we bit exercise maybe to get out for an hour you know promoting <laughs> the culture I suppose to some extent uh, whereas now the, the, some of the kids are just very very intent on Winning a, a world title or a yes, a competition driven. They were, they were totally competition yes. driven as opposed to enjoying. Well, well, but you brought, I suppose, it brought up this on the standard as well. You know, we have oh, yeah, yeah. you know, understand yeah, the, that the, too. The whole river dance explosion, obviously, to a different yes. level as well. Mm -hmm. but, and yeah. I mean, she's had past pupils performing river dance, you know, all over, and they live in Australia and all sorts of places, and she was very proud of them. I mean, she was proud of all her dancers, from the toddlers, she could do very little to the mm -hmm. champions, you know, they didn't, it didn't matter to mummy. She really we loved them to, all. We used to, even towards the end, when she had much uh, life left, as you say, and you know, she used to go to Money Glasgow on a Friday evening, and um, she could hardly walk herself, and mm -hmm. barely could have tell you what, Told you what day of the week it was, but she would take a wee child by the hand and mm -hmm. dance around with her, even you know, in her 80s, uh, and still show that enthusiasm. It was, was lovely, it was amazing, it really yeah. was amazing. Yeah. To watch, and, you know, and, and she was a very strong person in the fact that you know, over the years, you know, she organized tours to France and all these places, you know, to promote mm -hmm. the dancing, and we re really, really good tours. She became part of the concert trip all over America and England and everything but that you know she just she just was very 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 keen to move on and, mm -hmm. and just publicise Irish yeah. dancing very you know and with her music too she loved the music and loved she used to play it faces she used to play it and there's one there's one for example uh, where she was playing was it self dance Tom was that the face and Mara felt one night Mara was self dance yeah. and um, Thomas Thomas was taking the board. He was dancing set dance anyway. Can't remember what set dance it was. I'll tell you. It was what was it? I'll tell you. Thanks to Davis. Thanks to Davis. And Mummy was playing away, you see. And she wasn't watching him, obviously, because Thomas, poor Thomas, kind of got a mind freeze in the middle of it. Can, can I tell you why you said this? No, no, this is the truth. <laughs> this is the truth. And he stopped in the middle of it, right? Mm. And mummy was playing on, wasn't it? Were you looking? <laughs> no, just, just right, I'll jump at this stage. It was actually in Green Law, Green Law <laughs> stage, right? right? <laughs> and I started, and unlike my, some of my contemporaries, I didn't practice very much. So I wasn't a wee bit unsure, just let's say, of the, the dance. So I started, and a big long introduction, so I had plenty of time to concentrate. Get focused. But when the music start, music came to the bit to start, I just lost the run of myself. <laughs> and I stopped, and I looked over, and Mommy, God rest her, she was so intent on playing music, she had her head down, turned away from me, playing the music. <laughs> I, and she was playing away, and I had stopped dancing. And I had to say, Mommy, Mommy! <laughs> <laughs> so, Mommy, God love her, she had to turn around and stop. Oh, so dear. then she had to play the big long introduction again, <laughs> while Thomas sta stood on the stage, totally mortified. <laughs> Did you ever get through it? I got through it. I think I can't remember. And how much trouble were you going to when you got home? No, no. I, I think it, uh, I think it damaged my uh, chances of winning a prize that day. I think so. That so was good. You mentioned you mentioned the dance, Thomas. Well, thanks to thanks to David. David. Yeah. We have we have me here. Your wife may have and your <laughs> and your son Ronan here. I wonder what they give us. A, or any set dance. On the spot. Any set dance you would know. <laughs> or you mentioned uh, Waves. 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 Waves.
Yeah. So you sent away for Tory. That'd be lovely. We we used to as well on Kelly dance where we start off with a jig and then it goes into a march. Uh, while the dancers do the, the waves movement and then it returns to a, to a jig. So the musicians here are going to do a wee the, uh, tune. These tunes, whatever the expression is. But the first one's not Planks of David anyway. Irish Horsewoman. Irish Horsewoman into Roddy McCorley, which is my mother's signature tune, you might say. Live audience. Thanks to the neighbours, everything is good. So, uh, so that was your mother's house. She started dancing and being at the dancing school. So, where did you all fit in? Where you must have all started dancing from? No size, really. I, I used to always say you couldn't live in our house and not dance. You know, mm -hmm. that was always going to be, wasn't it? Mm. So, eh. Uh, you know, at the start, we probably just went to the classes with Mummy, and then you kind of obviously you got up and you you did it, and we danced mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. and we always went the where we all were taught actually was in Green Law. We Wednesday had, classes we used to talk about. Wednesday classes was in Green Law. All of our pump at home in Green Law, which is still uh, still there. And uh, I'm not sure why that was just the, the handiest time or whatever. And that was a very strong class, a couple of very strong families, McWiggins. Mm -hmm. From Balai, well, actually attended the class. Well, Balinese more so, but they attended the class in, in Green Law and the McGregor family. Joseph McGregor, for example, still involved with decent older steps and Shano dancing up around there in Donegal. So there's and a few very strong families, McGregor, Stars, all those. So maybe that was why we joined that class as such. But well, you see, no, you, you didn't go to the wall because you wanted to go to football well, as well, you see. <laughs> <that's the thing. laughs> well, it that had to be done too. So it, it was insisted upon that he always went to the Wednesday class then, yeah. you see, to Greenlaw. But then we all danced away and then, you know, it was time at all, we all, we all did our teachers and myself, mm -hmm. Thomas, our sister Deirdre and our sister Anne, four mm -hmm. of us all Anne's old, Anne's the first one, Anne's the oldest, so she's the first to qualify as a teacher in our family and then Haley and myself the same we did the same time and then Dirty followed. And then yeah, Mummy was adjudicating them. Yeah then Mummy was also an adjudicator. You have mm -hmm. to after you've teach for so many years become an adjudicator. So Mummy adjudicated far and wide. And then I myself and Deirdre we're now adjudicators as well. Yes. So it's just a natural progression, you know, and also, you know, as a teacher then Mummy's <coughs> pupils grew up through the dancing ranks and they, they went through their teacher um, examinations as well so she put many of the dancing teachers through her mm -hmm. through, through their, their exams as well 
So, it's, you know, it's, it's just multiplying all the time, which is lovely. Mommy used to be so proud of her ex pupils becoming dancing teachers and becoming adjudicators and just, you know, very, very proud that mm. she had started them from the were toddlers and up, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how it just keeps going. It's like the domino effect and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's lovely to see that, you know. And I There's so many dancers now because of Granny, it all came back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was, it was lovely just to see. It is lovely to see just all that just right. continuing. Uh, my, you said there, used to adjudicate us and uh, travel all over Ireland adjudicating. But she also went to Scotland on one occasion to adjudicate and came home when she brought home what well, would be then called an LP. Uh, it was mm -hmm. an LP of the musician who had played at the face. Now, if you go to the face nowadays, the music is some sort of keyboard with lots of effects attached to it. Uh, and it sounds like a, a, a Kelly band in the corner almost mm -hmm. or some sort of band uh, but the music for this face which was a whole weekend music of, of music at a face in Scotland a musician was a flute player so the whole music so <laughs> you can imagine what that was like a man God love him played mm -hmm. for two days dancing played the flute mm -hmm. and she came home with an LP this wee man she must have bought so it off for a bit of present or something. But, I mean, the, the kids nowadays, if they arrived to a face and the music was supplied by wee man on the flute, <laughs> the the, they probably would, would walk out. Walk out no. like, uh, so again, it uh, shows you how things have yeah, moved so on. Geez, maybe that's yeah. the competition thing. In the well, I mean, it's not what they practice till or something. No, like well, that's it. They, 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 they totally won. But fair play to your man for... He was keen enough, then. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish he did. He had some breath on him. Yeah. <laughs> I did all right. So I loved him. Yeah, he would have a deed. No, but, you know, um, like, Mommy did move the times, too, you know, and she, she really took on board all the changes that were coming through and dancing and the new costumes and all the things that lots of people don't agree with, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, you have to move, move the times, and if you're involved in something, right, you, you take on board what's happening in it and you move with it and progress with it. And she was very progressive, you know. She didn't sort of sit back in her arms and think, no, I don't like this. So, well, if, it's, if that's the way it is, we have to join it and we have to become part of it to be the best that we can. Because mm -hmm. that's what she always fostered in the dancers, that, you know, we're as good as the rest. And, and she had all Ireland champions and world champions and everything, you know. And she had also the little children that came, as we all do. We just came for the, the fun of it, didn't practice from one week to end week to the other, but sure, they, they loved it. Mm -hmm. And that was the main thing, and, you know. And the, she had great success, not that that's a measure, obviously, of, of anything, I suppose, but she had great success with teams, and in particular mixed teams at, at older level, like you know, senior, we would mm -hmm. call it senior competition. And she loved working with those teams, and the, the, in particular the boys. Like, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like some, of the, some of the guys are, are now, obviously, grown men, adults, and she just loved working with those teams. And again, as Ian said there, she's very progressive. Uh, because then it was just a, a, a competition called the Invented Dance, where mm -hmm. the dance teachers actually had uh, were allowed to, to invent a dance with whatever number, could be 12, 16, or even more than that in a team. So unlike the, the sort of prescribed dances like Sweet Samay or Three mm -hmm. Tunes or Lannigan's Ball that are, are written down somewhere, the teacher had an opportunity to, to invent a dance. And yes. she had great success making making up those dances. Uh, and perhaps it's a throwback to how it all started where the teams from all those years ago, you know, she got so much enjoyment out of the teams mm -hmm. that, you know, even towards the end it was the teams that really were very successful for, for her school. And one of the the, the dances that's made up where we helped her to choreograph was called the Bridge of Tomb. Yes. And she loved it and then her her other favourite one was the Cliffs of Moher. <laughs> it was always very near to our hearts as well. You know, so we still try and do those two teams of things. And, you know, she just, she just, I mean, I'm just thinking of us doing this interview here, but, you know, this wee chat, you know, she did many um, TV appearances and been mm -hmm. interviewed and it never annoyed her one, but, yeah. she, you know, she chatted away and, mm -hmm. you know, she, she, was, she was great. She was great. And, you know, she loved the music too. She just loved the music. She loved playing the accordion and, 
like the accordion was a ton weight <laughs> and I used to say I was carrying it into dance class and I thought oh mommy I wish you played the tin whistle because it was a ton weight <laughs> and it seemed, we, always seemed, yeah, <laughs> we always seemed to have to park at the furthest end of the car park to get it into the hall and you know there was no, no pressing the phone and the bluetooth come on you know it was hogging the accordion but she loved the accordion you see because she could slow down mm -hmm. and play it to the speed the children needed and do whatever you know and and when they, you know, that was obviously in the, the good old days where when she played the accordion, but then she, uh, you know, got a tape recorder and we played tapes, but still then occasionally she'd taken out the accordion. Mm -hmm. And I uh, can vividly recall, you know, when she took the accordion out and the wee kids just, just to gather around her mm -hmm. feet, just mesmerised mm -hmm. by seeing yeah. somebody playing live music for a start. Especially the dancing teacher playing. Yes. It was mm -hmm. just, uh, we should really have taken photographs at the time, never mm -hmm. thought of it. No mm -hmm. mobile phones, obviously. But no, I know, I know. But the kids used to gather around their feet, just uh, mouths open watching this lady playing the accordion. You know, it was, it was class, it was lovely. And she used to always talk about, she used to teach in Balmogwig in primary school in St. Trias, you know, on a Tuesday or something. Tuesday. And they had a piano in the hall, you know, and she used to love playing that piano for the, the children mm -hmm. in the school. Loved it. And she's got a great thrill out of it and a great buzz. And, she could give orders, you see, and play away, and <laughs> so she looks at it and it starts out, come on that old tape recorder, you have to rewind it, and whatever, <laughs> don't, you know, <laughs> back in the day, so that's no, it was good times, good times. Well, you mentioned uh, she designed her own dancers, and I suppose that's how dancers started, I suppose people had designed them somewhere, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. would that have been the likes of Jigs and Reels, or would that have been a set dance to a certain tune? Or? That would be a Kelly dance, or ten, not a team dance, right. so you're, you're 8 or 12 or 16 dancers. Mm -hmm. And whereas in the three tunes or the eight hand jig or the sweets of May, those are from a Ricky Four in your book. Mm -hmm. That they are detailed and that's if when you do the three tunes you do it a certain way, you don't deviate from that. Yes. Or do Lanigan's ball, you don't deviate from mm -hmm. that. But this this invented dance, you make up the figures, you make up the yeah, dances, yeah. what way that they go, usually done to a jig or reel and last for so long, so many bars of music. And they yes. can yeah, and you know, say if it's a bridge of tune for example you start the dancers in the shape of standing like in a bridge formation or something like that. Mm -hmm. Great, and with great success, I must say, over the years yes, in those competitions. Yeah. But she, you know, she loved the team, she really did. Mm -hmm. And you know, and the teams loved dancing, and, they did. Mm -hmm. and some of those kids stayed on. And their children are now dancing with yeah. us, which is lovely, yes. you know. But, but they, they lovely. prolonged their career, if that's the right term, that's right. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, they, they maybe had came to stage in their show dancing career where they reckon, well. You know, if I've got as far as I can can get here, and normally they would have left then, perhaps, or they've you know, they went to university or something, perhaps. But those kids then would have stayed on because of the teams yeah. and you know prolonged their their dancing career yeah. by and then of course by a few years and then of course um the score came along the GA score yes. came along in nineteen seventy I think it started For sure. and um. She um took a great interest in that um. And the, the set dancing and the Kelly dancing. Well, the, so well, the first year. Well, well Daddy got rest and he was chairman of the local club. Mm -hmm. Football club, so score being a football GA competition. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very keen to promote it. And then obviously, Mommy was keen to yep. join in. So, yep. so they, they, the first year of the score <laughs> competitions, they had a, a solo dancing competition and a set dancing competition. As well as I'm sure you're familiar with score, the yeah, yeah, instrumental yeah. section, whatever. So nobody quite knew what the set dancing competition was all about. It wasn't team dancing as such, it was set dancing. Obviously everybody knows what set dancing is now, but at that time nobody really knew. So another great man in Money Glass called Cattle Boyd, the late Cattle Boyd, he had been working down around um Donegal, no for Manor Direction, and he had heard of these set dances so Lo and behold, Mommy and Cattle Boyd and the eight people from Money Glass headed to, was it Balik or Balik, I think it was, just outside Balik to a house. And um, the lady and the, the man in the house had um, taught or danced, no, just, danced it for the years. Doing this in their youth so they, they, they taught the team the iron set and they moved back the furniture and we had a great night's nice I got out, it was only a wee young thing at that stage. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, every time we go past the house, mm. one one door, and I, I just see it there. But um, that was the start of it, and then they won that. They won the score that year. And they all earned that year. So um, 
then that fostered real interest in sets and that started a whole new tradition as well. And every year, not only then it moved from having a solo dancing competition, had a, a team dancing competition and a set dancing competition. So it was the two types of teams. So Mummy had more teams in, that were through to all Ireland finals and one you know, Greenlock team, a team from Glen, both in the senior scores and junior mm -hmm. scores. And so, the, you know, and the, the adults and the children who were competing in that, it was a different side of dancing, you know, and the parents all loved it and, you know, got great support from the parents, as we still do. And Mummy always did. She always, you know, had very, and she always said that about the parents. She couldn't have done it without so many supportive parents all through the years. And she used to say, you know, the parents, you know, they just weren't thinking about their own child. They were mm -hmm. thinking about the, the good of the class and the good of others. And she really, really appreciated all those people that helped her really yes. all those years and you know she couldn't have done it without them definitely couldn't have done it without them so that was mm -hmm. another string to her bow very good so um the set dancing at the scholars well no we have sat in through a few competitions at the fly but we're not really dancing no experts a swall to all rings <laughs> mostly um but a, a wee break a wee musical interlude you'd mentioned that uh, what was the one you had talked about the sweets of may mm -hmm. there's no sweets of may <laughs> i don't know are the three chins or the three chins or i could do the sweets of may i'll try <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get the nuts i don't know Okay. I don't think no. Can you cut this out if it's really dry? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, it's going to stay, but. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, so uh, we played the Achilles back and forward for uh, Mayor Cosgrove oh, uh, yeah. in Ralston, and the fellow that takes it, I don't know who he is, always asks, there's no sweets me. And you have to learn it now. I know what Raymond. Raymond only is it. He always asks the sweets of me, but none of us knew. Maybe he asked five or six times after each oh, other. I always insisted. <laughs> sweets of me. <laughs> sweets of me. Well, that'll learn we get. We'll learn that for me. <laughs> Free but, lessons uh, here. <laughs> it's always better on the street. But, uh, uh, you were talking, sorry, I'm not interrupting, but um, back to the Keeley band times. You were yes. just talking about tunes, you know. And Mum used to talk about the handlings they used to get in different places coming at the dead of night and getting stopped by the police and you know and flat wheels mm -hmm. and oh my god and you know no mobile phones nothing it used to be four or five six o'clock in the morning they would arrive home after playing at the Cayley and playing at the Cayley maybe for three hours mm -hmm. you know we're not talking mm -hmm. an hour and a half mm -hmm. maybe three hours playing that full accordion you know and but good days you know well, good crack. They, they, I mean they were very well regarded the Green Cross Cayley band as it became known as Mm -hmm. Very well regarded, used to record in Killy House and RT down Dublin and stuff. Yes. So, I mean, they're well thought of. But many times, mum said, you know, those were the best days of her life. Mm -hmm. Travelling around, she's very good friends, long, lifelong friends who played with her. And Jim Lynn, you Miss, know, Miss he McKeever was in particular was mm -hmm. a great, long, long standing friend. And she just, just loved going out and 
just to say there's only one microphone, just one microphone, <laughs> middle of the stage, and they all gather around uh, at Achille, around this one single microphone, which is amazing good. now when you think about the mm -hmm. technology available. Well, everybody has off themselves now. But, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. mixer boards and you name it. Uh, so. I say you don't play for three hours, you know, no, not anymore. No, not anymore. No. So it was but you loved it, I absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. All right, the next generation then, so mm -hmm. you sure all grew up, Thomas and Lena. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And your family's your own. And me, yeah. uh, I know your boys, three, but in two years, that's or a year, that's or two, I take it. So, mm -hmm. what's the next generation then? Well, so, is it going to keep going? We all Probably dance, is. all our cousins and the close boys, and we all dance. And so was like Mummy when she was growing up, and Thomas and everybody just couldn't grow up in our house and not be a dancer mm -hmm. so um yeah we all danced still do the teams well i don't do the teams anymore too old but um hopefully please god i'll be doing my teacher soon yeah. um and just it's keeping it alive for granny like it's the most mm -hmm. important thing to me so like we still go to the classes mm -hmm. oh, weekend, awesome. weekend. the girls mm -hmm. I, have, I have two girls and two boys and the girls help me in the class and um the boys, they come along and need be. And they're <laughs> told to. They're told to. I know they're good. <laughs> they, they still dance as well. They don't yeah. do solo dancing anymore. They do their teams. And um, as I say, you know, I like, but like your house and the music, Thomas, mm -hmm. you can't be in our house and not dance, you know. Mm -hmm. so, but it doesn't know harm. Doesn't That's know why harm. we have to explain to people why it's called the Allen School. You know, mm -hmm. why it's called the Allen School of Dancing. Uh. And then it was Mrs. Close and now it's... Gilly McConnell, like where's the, the Allen bit, where's it come in? Somebody actually asked me that so. today, I was with my friend today and she said, so how come it's the Allen school if your mummy was close? Mm -hmm. I said, well, it was actually my granny, <laughs> I know. now that we're in the third generation, mm -hmm. but like with Zoom dancing classes during lockdown, it all moved online, we were doing Zoom mm -hmm. and I was a Zoom woman. She was a Zoom woman, yeah. <laughs> how, 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 how is it teaching dance online? It's not easy, you know, it, it really isn't, it's, it's, it's hard for the dancers and it's hard for ourselves, you know. But um, they got, they, everybody got better at it, you know, got used to it perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, it's not anywhere near the same as being face to face, but it kept them going and, and I have to say all our children were great, they, they tuned in every week and joined in and practising week to week and, you know, it's, it's a very fit and energetic sport now, Irish mm -hmm. dancing and it, um, it was very important that we knew we were keeping them going and you know keeping them fit and do, they were do, keeping doing their exercises learning new steps learning and new and steps just keeping them you know, an interest in it and just you know not letting them fall by the wayside and so that when things would start up again that they would be ready to move on again you mm -hmm. know but i have to say they were very very good at coming in and you know the, the internet would go off and the sound would go, <laughs> the, sound would go <laughs> and <laughs> the music when i would play the music in my living room it wouldn't be Think with them, you, yes. what they were here now, but you know, always you, a bit of a delay, you know, you right. get used to it, and you know, um, and but we got more used to it. Like it was funny at the start, we just were doing it in the iPad, and it was really small, and then eventually we did it in my laptop, and then eventually put it up on the TV screen. The TV was huge, so <laughs> next year we'll be, there's another lockdown. Do it in the cinema. <laughs> you should, you should probably time to adapt to it, don't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get but, experts, uh, but no, it was good, and it was. It was just was nice to see people, especially during that yeah. first lockdown. It was just mm -hmm. nice to see their faces and people just wanted to, to talk. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. even see their mummies and their because there was a fear at the start, you know. Yeah. So it was nice to be able to chat to them and you know. I think that's the one thing I remember from like the first Zoom that we did, kind of just to practice to see that everyone could get it. Everyone was like, "Oh my God, seeing other faces!" <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like it was only a fortnight into lockdown at that stage, but yeah. it's nearly yeah. emotional at that point. Know. Know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know, I suppose nowadays they're fed up children with the Zoom with the teaching at school, you know. But at that, at the early lockdown, it was you know, such a more fun, yeah, more fun experience. No, it was um, best of a bad situation, like. Uh, are, the, are the class still Zoom classes or no? Are well, we back in the halls again. We're, and summer obviously is we during time we were able to get summer. back in but it had to be limited the numbers we yes. had had small groups at a time but we're hoping now in september or even in august that we'll get back no, you know bigger good. groups together which will be lovely because yeah. uh, you know when you have only a small group at a time they don't see the rest of the dancers yeah mm -hmm. you know and, and, and that's the, the, such a big part for them to see their friends and yes. yeah and as well as that when the younger ones see the older ones dance they say well oh god i'd like to be able to do that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that raises the standard as well you know so hopefully we'll get back to those days which we'll be get great. back into more halls there's a few halls that 
have so an open jet. Well, the GA so. was obviously weren't yeah. allowed mm -hmm. to have anybody yeah. in, so we're slowly getting there. Are you just kind of stuck for space if you're relying heavily on GA halls? Or and uh, venues, actually, venues? actual venues. Well, yeah, you know, well, I suppose we're used to having the halls now, you know, but newer dancing teachers, yes, I can understand that, you know, the venues are becoming more limited. Mm -hmm. You know, I suppose some dancing teachers now have their own studios, which may be a little bit smaller, but they're perfect for them because they can have their own venue then, which is great. But, yeah, I can see that, that you know, that the can be a difficulty in getting different places and mm -hmm. different venues and, and it's also now you know maybe not as many bigger sports halls now you know yeah, well, some of the schools you know very small numbers so that for solo dance is fine for any of the classes you would have teams you know the, the facilities have to be much bigger for mm -hmm. for team yeah. teams to practice obviously and that's a bit of an issue but we're just you know, talking about the standard there, the, the standard of the dancing the, at the top level from very young age groups, the, the standard of the, the best dancers is, 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 well, no, is well, amazing. Yeah. It really is. You know, they're, they're proper athletes, some of these kids. Yes. I mean, you know, they, they maybe don't get the credit they deserve in terms of how fit and how agile. Yeah. And, and it does sometimes annoy me. People say, oh, when they look at dancing, they say, oh, it's just the wigs and the, the fake tan they're looking mm, at. Yeah. You know, they don't see the talent sometimes. Mm -hmm. they, the they, skill. Yeah, the, and the skill and the fitness. You know, they, they just sort of are a wee bit against them because of whatever. What they see. What they mm. see. But I think, you know, we have to give, my goodness, full credit to them. It, it, it is a real talent. It's as much now about fitness and gymming and strength mm -hmm. about than really skill itself because yeah. mm -hmm. it's to be able to jump. <laughs> Six feet in there, you need a strong core, like so. so the, kids, the kids now, before we go on to stage, but like the footballers, you know, they're, they're stretching and they're uh, make their eyes water oh. <laughs> quite hard, so the, the stretches are fit to do. Uh, and honestly, like where girls dance and the boys play football and dance, obviously, or have dance, but I mean, the, the our girls could lift their legs and stretch their their legs better than the boys could mm -hmm. as footballers who are doing all the strength conditioning and, and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. It really is and you know it's, it's, it's a, a credit to them and maybe they don't get enough positive mm -hmm. publicity mm -hmm. uh, in terms of their ability and the talent that they have and the hours of practice that they put in. Commitment. Commitment, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, definitely yes. is a problem. I know I couldn't uh, <laughs> stretch much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't dance otherwise. Uh, you can dance. always start. Oh. You can always start. You haven't seen me dance. Yeah. <laughs> Again, um, as Eileen said earlier, the, through the score, the Morning Glass football team, if you like, but the, the, the representing Morning Glass, they won the All Ireland score in 1971 72 uh, in the set dancing. And that was really way before the set dancing revival. Mm -hmm. uh, locally here, the set dancing was traditionally something that was done around County Clare, or Cork, Kerry, whatever. Uh, and you know we had no knowledge really of, of real set dancing as such. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I got a bit older, I went to Belfast and, and whenever I got involved with set dancing, and I absolutely love it. I'd have to say, uh, but all of that was again. Um, that started with with my mother and uh, those early days of score. Mm -hmm. um, like we had Connie Ryan, God rest him, Connie Ryan again. They have four months in Cahill Boyd. It was a four man for a for a clerk works for a, an architect, and they were building the the Met office in Dublin. Mm -hmm. And Connie Ryan, this guy called Connie Ryan, was in Dublin, and said that's a, made a bit of a revival in Dublin, and he heard about this man Connie Ryan, and he brought him up to the football uh, Morning Glass Hall and there's eight of us at that stage I was in the senior team as well and Connie taught us uh, a couple of figures of the cash on set and again we danced that for years and then after quite a number of years Connie became the easily the best known set dancing teacher in Ireland and travel mm -hmm. all over the world teaching set dancing uh, so <laughs> we had met Connie and used Connie if you like many years before. Uh, Connie sadly passed away then, um, but he was a fantastic character and a, a, a great star of promoting set dancing. Mm -hmm. So again, 
like we were in there at the start if you like <laughs> uh, right from the very start in the early 70s uh, and again through Connie uh, and way before the whole set dancing revival I was just talking about comradeship too um, you know back in the day when mummy started dancing and you know there were fewer dancing teachers all over the north you know there was likes in Derry there was Miss McLaughlin and there was Miss McCoy in Belfast Mr. Mr. Kerrigan Arthur Burns in Newry you know and they, they were all the stalwarts they kept it going they really did keep things going when mm. times were tough and then, of course, their pupils became the teachers and they, once again, kept it going. But in the hard old times, they kept it going. Well, but there, there are parallels to Irish music as well uh, that you'd be familiar with. Like, there was a while that Irish music wasn't at all popular mm -hmm. and if you said you played Irish music, you are some sort of you know, oddity or crusty or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to some extent, it's the same with, with Irish dancing. Uh, yes. So... Had it not been again similar artists with music, had it not been for a few stalwarts, mm -hmm. and you could argue maybe the Irish language as well. Yes. Uh, all those things had to be kept going through the darker times, as it were, and now we're seeing the the, 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 the values and and, and yes. the fruits of all that, and oh, people do appreciate, not only obviously Molly and and what she did, but people like that who did keep the things going, be it mm. in music. Dancing Irish language. In such or difficult whatever. times mm. and yes, such yes. Uh, op opposition, and you know, just. And a lot of the opposition was not, I'm not talking about political opposition no. necessarily, it was within your own community, mm -hmm. for want of a better term, where it wasn't a cool thing to do to yes. either play Irish music or do Irish dancing like that. And thankfully, there were enough so And speaking Irish again was That's something right, that was uh, considered a bit odd. But it's fantastic now that people have seen through that and I mean the strength is, is fantastic oh it's definitely it's nice that re you are able to sit there and tell the stories about them all and that there because a lot of people like that didn't get recognition, re recognition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and now yeah. I suppose I don't mm -hmm. know many people listen to this but somebody listened to it and they yeah. know the story then yeah. and, which and, is I mean, nice like, to pass on yeah. Yeah. and I can assure you mommy didn't do it for the recognition no. it was yeah. out of pure love and given where she came from, uh, mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense, but her, her background, uh, background. It's, it's amazing mm -hmm. that the enthusiasm she had for it. You know, the amount of dancing schools now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It is, honestly, Absolutely. if I sat down and I worked it out, like it, it's, it would be quite a, a tree, a a yeah. pyramid, whatever. It's all seemed to be very popular now, but yeah, yeah. 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 But it, 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 again, it's it's any of those things it keeps a few people to keep it going oh, sure then. eventually it'll, it'll take off again and and you know it's easy to keep going when things are popular mm -hmm. things are going well but it's, it's keeping going through the slump times and the That's hard right. times and keeping the January evenings uh, you know <laughs> yeah but yeah but back through the years yeah. you know all the, the highs and lows yeah. of a, a year you know the troubles and that I mean I remember when we were we um when, <laughs> Mommy used to adjudicate down all around the country, down south, and she always took me with her, you know. And I loved it, of course, getting away for the weekend. But that was in the height of the troubles, and used to come back up through the likes of Ochnacloy and all these places, and we were petrified because it was the dead dark of night, and through all the checkpoints, and we were, oh my goodness, we were so scared. Mm, you're scared to see it coming from a face, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was scary times, and, you know, we just. Well, kept going. I don't know what what she thought I was going to do. She, I was a great help to her. I know, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got I got a weekend out of it anyway. But no, all right. bad. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, <laughs> what about another wee ginger? Uh, We've got beer next week. Really. Oh, yeah, yeah, for, uh, <laughs>
um, she was invited to Arsene Uchtrin mm -hmm. to the garden party in summertime and the president was a lovely day and the dancers were invited down to dance and it was a very proud moment for herself and for all of us you know that she was able to the pinnacle obviously to go and dance with the president and meet the president and it was a lovely day for all the dancers the group we went Mm. Adults and seniors and younger members, our boys danced and whatever. Mm. Well, it was a lovely day. Well, it was Mary McAleese, Mary McAleese, and Martin's only from Port Portland only. He was chatting to Granny and mm -hmm. playing, playing the flag. And yeah, yeah, it was a proud day for yeah. her. <laughs> she loved it. And the, one of our one of our dancers, um, her father, he constantly had played football with me, Malachi Duffin. He's a great, well known Irish language mm -hmm. uh, fraternity. And great singer, songwriter, whatever, and a couple to song about Mommy. Yes. Uh, uh, put a wee CD out and stuff. Uh, it really captures her life to some extent and what she meant to, to people. It's called If I Hadn't Been For You. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a nice tribute to her now, so it was. Do you know any of the words, Thomas? Uh, well, I'm going to sing it. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was lovely. It, it if really it hadn't is. been for you, what would we to do? If you hadn't helped to tie her dancing, dancing shoes, shoes, there'd be loads of little feet, feet. Of, of scores of little feet on every dancing street, street. and talent loss if it hadn't the been for loss you. It hadn't been for you. It's a beautiful Very song. Good. It was a lovely mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Really, really Very beautiful. Good. It's a nice trip. Well, I haven't looked at them. Honestly, I said. Oh yeah, no, it's wrong on the hanger. Mm, or we have his seen daughter Fenella put it on Facebook when Granny died, but we'll get you a copy. Signed. <laughs> 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 for how much? Highest <laughs> 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 better. It was nice. It was, it was lovely. She was embarrassed at the time, obviously, but mm -hmm. now in hindsight, it was lovely. Yeah. You know, it's another thing, but re recognition there. Somebody yeah. has yeah. obviously seen what she's done. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. How she grew the dancing and yeah. on this decided to do their wee bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Malachi was from one of Glass originally, and Malachi know, danced. I might never really dance much, I would have thought now, um, as children or girls, yeah. honestly, but, or yeah. vanilla, but, um, no, it was, it was a lovely tribute, and I must say, and, um, no. you know, back in the day, we were just staying there, just when Maeve was playing there, but we were talking about, you know, she was a forward thinker, now, she, like, we, <laughs> we performed on UTV, like, I was only about seven, mm. and, on Tommy's, Tommy's toy shop. No, it wasn't toy shop. It was Tommy's tea time with Tommy. Tea time with Tommy. Tea. And we we've, we've often said we'd love to see that. Well, time. maybe we wouldn't love to see it. <laughs> tea time with Tommy was because one of the, the thrills we got was that when we were dancing backstage, all the, the props studio. for Tommy's toy shop no, were and the rubber room and the rubber room and all. They to a certain to a certain number of people listening, that <laughs> means absolutely nothing. <laughs> But to a certain generation, that means a lot. Yeah, the magic but, mirror. Yes, we, we found out that the magic mirror wasn't actually magic at all. <laughs> they had, two, the blue. They had yeah. two mirrors. It was not awful. Like, that, that is awful. Crushing blue to change it. Burst the bubble. I know. Oh, no. And you found out. We found everyone out, else yeah, had come. to wait till they are growing up to so, ruin that dream. I'd say, apologise to anybody who thinks we've gone off our head here. But <laughs> to a certain generation, that will mean something. That, so uh, I hate really. to break it to you, but uh, the magic mirror wasn't magic. And do you know what? You know, it was the close us, the close family. Any concert there was in the country, yeah. we were shipped out to dance. Mm -hmm. You know, there's us in the uh, Bertie Sweeney mm -hmm. and Anna, Anna Francie Brawley. Anna France and Brawley and the McPeak family were playing. Eileen Donaghy. Eileen Donaghy. It was always mm -hmm. us, you know. <laughs> in the good old days of the concerts, you were sure of us yeah, performing. Yeah, and what they used to call a variety concert. Uh -huh. And oh, we danced every, go to see us every hole in the age. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We performed, we did a wee three hand reel or whatever. <laughs> uh, you yeah. still do, haven't you? I've seen, uh, I've seen you dance at the flower. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> in front of the stage, <laughs> you and Maeve. Uh, um, I think you were. Uh, uh, aye, so that, um, you're on. Running, oh, probably. Well, the two, but I was just well. I might see you saw <laughs> from afar. I was way at the back somewhere, but I could see heads popping. You'd have up. to come and join in the next time. I told you I can't. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll play music. I'll play music. I'll do. <laughs> oh, I we just we just had another thing about Mummy, Anna McCoy's dancers always performed in the program called Come Dancing. It was mm -hmm. filmed usually in Blackpool, and um, 
she used to play for them live on the TV, you know. And one particular instance, I remember she was so annoyed because when she was playing, you'll understand as musicians, she was playing and the orchestra always played with her. But she played the whole way and they kept racing. And all <laughs> Mummy said she, she couldn't get them to slow down. <laughs> and after it was over, she was in tears because she knew that the music just wasn't mm -hmm. right. And she kind of insisted that they had to do it again, you know. <laughs> and Mummy's head was going to make sure they would keep the right rhythm. Oh, right. Yeah, you you know? that, that, we come down to the ballroom dancing, obviously, but the different sections, one of the sections was called offbeat. Mm -hmm. So offbeat allowed you to do anything. So the, the, the show um, Northern was Ireland based Kingdom. in various geographical regions of the United Kingdom, if you like. So it was Northern Ireland. So Northern Ireland might have been competing against home counties north or somewhere. Yes. So the offbeat section invariably did a bit of Irish dancing. So Anna McCoy's. Anna McCoy's. Dancing, yeah. who, again, Anna was the, the lady who had uh, helped Mommy to become a, a dancing teacher. Mm -hmm. So her dancers were performing and, and Mommy was playing. So uh, I, I'm sure that's quite an ordeal for her. Mm -hmm. uh, you can advise yourself. <laughs> now, playing solo, effectively. Oh, but better back up from the, from the orchestra. But... Uh, and I'd say that was you know quite a quite a big thing. Uh, well, it would be. You know, if you're invited to play and strictly calm dancing now, you'd be thinking, God, I've oh, made it here. Made, made a big time, sure. Can't see that call coming. I just put it out there. Just put it out there, Keith. Keith's the BBC producers are listening. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, totally. We're available. Uh, <laughs> before I, uh, again, just uh, one of the things went in your head, but. Um, she played music, as we said, but uh, herself and a man called Eddie O'Neill, who's originally from Ockerfell, and coincidentally Eddie's nephew's a dancing teacher now, but they used to play as a wee sort of duet. He played a fiddle, mm. and they're known as May and Eddie. So the, this gig uh, every... Tuesday whenever, night. Tuesday night in the Northern Counties Hotel in Port Rush, which yes. is no longer there, but it's now been replaced. But they used to play at Irish night for tourists, yeah. And the, the the top of the bill at the the oh, concert nice. and every Tuesday night was a local singer called Gloria Honeyford. Yes. <laughs> so Gloria Honeyford was the the singer and yeah. there's Irish dancers uh Jean and Jean Tennant School from Balamina. Balamina Balamoni and me and Eddie played Irish music Very as good. a wee as a wee slot in the in the Thank show. You. So Gloria's went on to <laughs> well, obviously, she don't know her age. Bigger fame. Didn't hold her back, like. No. Uh, so uh, again. Interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot of big names in that variety sort of show there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> every Tuesday we used to love. We used to always be very good on a Tuesday, so as we could get going. Yeah. And they always served. Another six days in the week. Yeah. There was, uh, yeah. There, it was an Irish stew night, you know. And he was lucky he got a bowl of stew too. Mm. <laughs> That's always the highlight. Couldn't make it. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Going to size and stuff, so it's always the highlight of the tea in the middle of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Without doubt. What a thing. Taurus and Ailing and Orla and me have been running. Pleasure. <laughs> a pleasure. Oh, Thanks very much for agreeing to us. Mm. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's very good to hear the history of. Uh, Thanks for having us. Very it's fun. lovely yeah. to be able to recount it all. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's only when you start it, you know. Things come to your mind, so it was lovely. Thank you for the no. opportunity. Thank you again. Thanks for offering the chance. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.